basic trig identities. Let's list out some identities that you really need to know backwards and forwards. The first group are the reciprocal identities. These are obvious. These are just the ones that express the reciprocal relationships between the different trig functions. So of course you have cosecant theta equals 1 over sine theta, secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta, and cotangent theta equals 1 over tangent theta. But then you can also express them the other way around. If cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta, then of course sine theta is 1 over cosecant theta. And the same thing holds true for the others as well. We have cosine theta equals 1 over secant theta, and tangent theta equals 1 over cotangent theta. So these are the reciprocal identities. Very easy to remember as long as you know those reciprocal relationships. Let's turn then to the quotient identities. There are two of these. The first one links up the tangent function with the sine and cosine functions. So we have tangent theta being the quotient, quotient means divide, the quotient of sine theta and cosine theta. And then the other one is similar for the cotangent function, and this one is easy to understand. If tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other, as we just stated, then obviously that means the cotangent function must be equal to cosine over sine, the quotient of the cosine and sine functions. The third category is the Pythagorean identities. We have seen one of these before. Maybe the most famous trig identity that there is, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Remember that sine squared theta means the entire sine theta ratio is being squared. It's not the angle that's being squared. It's the entire sine theta ratio. Well, there are two other Pythagorean identities that can be obtained from this first one. And the way to do that, look what happens if I divide every term in this expression by sine squared theta. Let's see, sine squared theta over sine squared theta, that's just 1, something divided by itself. Cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Well, we just got through saying that cosine theta divided by sine theta is cotangent theta. I just have two of them. So I have a cosine theta over sine theta and then squaring it. Well, that's what I have here. I have a cosine over a sine and then the whole thing being squared. So this must just be cotangent squared theta. 1 over sine squared theta. Well, we know that 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. Again, I have that. It's just being squared. So this would be cosecant squared theta. Here is a second version of a Pythagorean identity. And then there's one more, and we obtained that one by dividing everybody by cosine squared theta this time. So let's see, sine over cosine is tangent. Again, everybody's being squared, so that would be tangent squared theta. Cosine squared divided by itself, there's one again. And one over cosine is secant. Again, it's being squared, so this would be secant squared theta. So here is the third and final version of the Pythagorean identity. We have the original one involving sine and cosine. We have the second one involving cotangent and cosecant. And the third one involving tangent and secant. These are helpful identities when you know one of the ratios and you're hoping to find another one. These are all identities you should commit to memory. With the Pythagorean identities, you can either memorize all three or you can remember the first one and then learn the process of how to obtain the other two. And then lastly, we've got the negative angle identities. There are six of them. I've put some of the graphs over here to help me explain. The negative angle identities ask if there is a connection between the sine of the negative of an angle versus the sine of the original angle. We'll take a look at the sine graph here. If I was to do sine of pi over 2, the answer is 1. If I was to do sine of negative pi over 2, the negative of the original angle, the answer is negative 1. So the answers came out close to being the same. It's just that one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Let's try it somewhere else. 3 pi over 2, answer negative 1. Negative 3 pi over 2, answer positive one. And you can try other examples, but it turns out that the sine value for the negative angle will always be the opposite, the negative, 
of whatever the sine value was for the original angle. Here's our first negative angle identity. The reason, by the way, this is true has to do with the symmetry of the graph. Remember the sine function is an odd function. It's symmetrical across the origin. If you flip the graph around 180 degrees, it lands on itself. Any odd function shares this same property. Well, that means I know that the cosecant negative angle identity is going to work the same. Cosecant matches sine. It's also an odd function. So cosecant of negative theta will be the negative of cosecant theta. How about for cosine? What relationship is there between cosine of the negative angle and cosine of the corresponding positive angle? Well, again, we can take a look on the graph. Let's see, what would be a good example? Uh, pi lands at negative 1. Negative pi also lands at negative 1. Let's see, what about 2 pi? 2 pi is up here at 1. Negative 2 pi also at 1. It looks like for cosine, the cosine of the negative angle is an exact match. Cosine of negative theta equals cosine theta. This is true because the cosine function is an even function. It was symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, meaning if you fold the graph across the y-axis, it lands on itself. Well, because of that, you're going to have this relationship where the cosine values on this side are just going to match the cosine values on the other side. Again, that automatically tells me how it's going to work for the secant function. Secant matches cosine. It was also an even function. So the secant of negative theta will equal the secant of theta. And then what about tangent? What's the connection between tangent of the negative angle and tangent of the positive angle? You can see it on the graph pretty easily. Here is pi over 4 going up to 1. Here's the opposite angle, the negative angle, going down to negative 1. Tangent was an odd function also, so it's going to work just like the sine function. Tangent of the negative angle is going to match the opposite or the negative of the tangent of the original angle. So this one works just like sine. And of course that means that the cotangent function will also work this way. Cotangent of negative theta will be the negative of the cotangent of theta. These are pretty easy to remember. Four of them are odd functions, and so you have that negative relationship between the two ratios. Only cosine and secant are even where the two ratios match. Thanks for watching.